friends this video is a part of an open education resource of fdp 201x on pedagogy for online blended teaching learning process organized by it bombay this video is under the course microwave and radar on the topic clistron developed by the team members sarita verma kiran khandakle jaya vakure of rc 109a team 680 of marathwada institute of technology aurangabad The objectives are after watching this video students will be able to identify the need of clistron understand the construction and working principle describe the operation of clistron explain velocity modulation and bunching process and of course list the applications of clistron these are the important texts associated with the clistron these are the contents objectives limitations of conventional vacuum tubes history of clistron clistron the types along with principle construction working the basic concepts of velocity modulation and bunching process applications quiz and references before we start discussing on clistron i would request you to pause the video for a minute while you think about this and write it down in a notepad or document why conventional tubes cannot be used in microwave frequencies Ordinary vacuum tubes are useless at microwave frequencies because they suffer from a number of limitations as frequencies raised vacuum tubes suffer from these limitations that is interelectrode capacitance and inductances transit time effect gain bandwidth limitation effect of rf losses and effect due to radiation loss a short transit time is essential if grid loss and noise are to be minimized as is the reduction of internal capacitance and inductance so to overcome the problem several semiconductor devices have been designed and one of them is clistron clistron was invented just before world war 2 by the varian brothers sigurd and russell from stanford university in 1937 what is a clistron it is a vacuum tube that can be used either as a generator or an amplifier of power at microwave frequencies and this is the schematic of a clistron which we'll be discussing later clistrons have been classified into three, into three types based on the number of resonant cavities multi cavity clistron two cavity clistron and reflex clistron which consists of a single cavity let us understand the principle and construction of clistron the principle which is used is velocity and current modulation and the five important components of an clistron are an electron gun which is used to generate the electron beam two cavities cavity a called the buncher cavity separated by a space which is called the drift space and the second cavity cavity b which is called the catcher cavity the electron beam is collected by the collector working of a clistron a high velocity electron beam is developed by the electron gun and it is focused and sent down a long glass tube this beam passes the input cavity which is the buncher cavity the drift space and finally it reaches the collector the second cavity is there before the collector which is called the catcher cavity the beam passes the gap a in the buncher cavity to which the rf signal to be amplified is applied so the rf signal which is to be amplified is applied to the buncher cavity as this electron beam drifts freely without any influence from the rf signal until it reaches the gap b in the output or the catcher cavity oscillations will be excited in the catcher cavity so the a large output will be obtained and these oscillations are much higher than the buncher cavity the beam is then finally collected by the collector this voltage generated at the gap a is responsible to produce the bunching of the electrons or velocity modulation of the electron beam let us understand what is velocity modulation electron beam has a constant velocity when it reaches the gap a 
RF signal to be amplified is applied to the Buncher cavity. Based on the RF signal, the velocity of the electron beam will vary. When the RF signal voltage is zero or when no gap voltage is applied, the electron beam will move with a constant velocity or with no change towards the through the drift space to the cavity B. But when the RF signal passes through a positive half cycle or when it is positive, the electron beam, the, uh, the, we can say the velocity of the electrons will increase or they will move with an increase in velocity towards the catcher cavity. And when the electron beam passes through the negative half cycle, the, there will be a decrease in the velocity of the electrons as they drift through the drift space towards the catcher cavity. So, this variation in electron velocity in the drift space due to the RF voltage across the gap A is known as velocity modulation. So, based on the RF voltage, there will be a variation in the electron velocity. Bunching process. Another important term which is to be understood is bunching. Electrons have an opportunity to catch up with other electrons in the drift space. When an electron catches up with another electron, it can either simply move ahead or it may exchange energy with the slow electrons and give its excess energy so that the two can bunch together and move ahead. This is an applicate diagram which helps us to understand the bunching process in a better way. So we can see here three electrons, one electron which is the called the central electron we can say or uh, which has been labeled as same. Since it is passing through the RF signal, when no voltage is applied or when the gap voltage is zero, there will be no change in the velocity of the electron. And here is another electron which passes through the RF voltage when it is, is passing through the negative half cycle. So the velocity of the electron will decrease or it will become a little slower compared to the original velocity. Similarly, another electron here which is passing through the gap voltage or through the RF signal when the RF voltage is positive. So, due to that, the velocity of the electron will increase. And these electrons will meet at some point in the drift space resulting in the form of bunches. So, as the beam progresses, we can see in the drift space, bunching may become more and more complete and more and more faster electrons catch up and with bunches ahead. The current passes the catcher cavity in quite pronounced bunches and therefore very cyclically with time. So this variation in current density is known as current modulation. Bunches, bunches arrive at the catcher gap once per cycle and they deliver energy to the cavity which results in large power gain or results in amplified output. Let us see few applications of Clistron. It can be used as a medium high and very high power amplifier in UHF and microwave range, in UHF TV transmitters, in tropospheric scatter transmitters, in satellite earth station transmitters and in radar transmitters. So before I conclude, I would request you to small this small quiz. First is in a Clistron amplifier, the input cavity is called. I hope you will be able to answer, of course, buncher cavity and cholesterol operate on the principle of velocity modulation. These are the few references and thank you.